Malin Mitchell says he's the only candidate in the 2018 governor's race with calluses on his hands. He's the head of the professional firefighters of Wisconsin, and he's on a long list of Democrats fighting for the chance to challenge Governor Scott Walker this fall. Hey, I'm Jesse Ompoyan, the political reporter for the Cap Times. Welcome to Wedge Issues, a new podcast about the 2018 elections in Wisconsin. We talked with Mitchell this week about his campaign, but first we're going to take a little time to run down the big stories in the Capitol this week. Into the Let's start with the legislature's Joint Finance Committee. This is a powerful committee that uh, essentially rewrites the budget and approves any any changes that go on to the legislature after the governor introduces the budget. Um, it's a big deal to be on this committee. And this week, Senator Alina Taylor, a Democrat from Milwaukee, was removed from the committee uh, by leadership after an HR investigation into a dispute with one of her employees. Uh, she was found to have bullied the employee and some other employees and was ordered to go through uh, some training on that. In the meantime, State Senator LaTanya Johnson, who's another Democrat from Milwaukee, has been appointed to take her place on that committee. Lena Taylor had been in the news uh, a few weeks ago for an incident that took place at a bank in downtown Milwaukee. Uh, she uh, allegedly berated a bank teller uh, over a dispute over uh, an account that she was dealing with. Uh, she was given a citation by Milwaukee police for disorderly conduct. She's fighting that. Um, both of these situations, she says, uh, she's essentially a victim of, of mistreatment, both by the media and the police, um, just a victim of public opinion uh, sort of taking over. Next, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. Senate race, in particular, a tweet that was put out by the campaign of State Senator Leah Vukmir, who is running against a businessman from Delafield, Kevin Nicholson, for the chance to challenge Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin this fall. So the U.S. Senate race uh, has been heated and and interesting since the two candidates met in a debate a few weeks ago. the, they, they essentially got in a fight over Kevin Nicholson's military record. Um, he implied that Leah Vukmir did not respect his record. She called for an apology. He has refused to apologize. Uh, and Leah Vukmir uh, tweeted a graphic <laughs> saying that she she's on Team America and Tammy Baldwin is on Team Terrorist. Um, this is because of a vote over uh, confirming the, the nominated uh, head of the CIA. Um, Tammy Baldwin is is not on board with confirming this nominee, which also happens to be the position of one of the masterminds behind the 9-11 attacks. So uh, this was a bold graphic. It was not subtle. And it's gotten some rebuke a little bit on the left and the right. Uh, Leah Vukmir has said she is not apologizing for it. She does does not uh, want to back down from that because she believes this is a chance to uh, use some some bold statements to call attention to Tammy Baldwin's record, which she thinks is um, about as offensive as as the graphic that she put out. And finally, we'll talk about one more development in the Senate race. Kevin Nicholson suggested that uh, Democrats who serve in the military are uh, – sort of not of the same ilk as conservatives. He said he questions their thought process. And this is another uh, instance where an apology was called for. He said, no, absolutely not. He stands by those remarks. And these two stories are are happening right before these two candidates head to Milwaukee this weekend, where they're going to be looking for the endorsement of the grassroots voters in the Republican Party of Wisconsin, which is having its state convention. Um, Voters will choose whether or not to endorse in this race. And if they do end up coming to a majority on an endorsement, uh, that candidate will get sort of the the full resources and support of the Republican Party thanks to, to that stamp of approval. Now let's move on to this week's interview. We talked with Malin Mitchell, who's not new to the campaign trail. He ran for lieutenant governor in the recall election a few years ago. That was unsuccessful. This year, he's hoping he'll have better luck running for governor. We talked about his campaign platform. We talked about him being the only African-American in the race. And we talked about how uh, loud chewers are one of his biggest pet peeves. So talk to me about you. You've got firefighters in your family. Two, yeah. Two. Um, I, only have, I only have two brothers. But are you all firefighters? Yes. My older brother is a <laughs> firefighter in Atlanta, and uh, my younger brother is a firefighter in St. Paul. So how, first of all, what, what prompted you to, to get involved in that? But then what, what made you take the next step from being a firefighter to uh, getting involved in, in the union? 
Well, you know, actually, when I got out of high school, um, so I played a cello for 12 years. And when I got out of high school, I thought I wanted to be in an orchestra um, or actually be a chef. So I decided to be a chef. So I went to culinary school in Chicago for a year. So I went to the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago. I wanted to be a chef and own a restaurant. And I went there for about two months. And my parents, I, I called home and told my parents, I said, Mom, Dad, this sucks. I want to do something else. Um, and they said, well, you got to stay because Mitchell's don't quit. One, it was a two-year program. And two, we paid for the whole year. So you're at least staying for the full year. So I stayed for the full year. Um, while I doing that, my brother became a firefighter first. Uh, he raved about the job. I've always been interested in it, but not quite knowing how to get into the profession. He raved about it. So then I, while I was taking chef school during the day, working in the middle of the day at night, I was taking fire uh, one, firefighter one, firefighter two EMT classes. So I got hired. I actually got hired in, in Madison when I was a uh, young age of 19 years old, uh, close to 20. I got hired in Madison and Peoria at the same time, and I chose Madison. And it's a great choice, obviously, than Peoria, Illinois. What what uh, helped you take the next step then from from there into to union leadership? So really, I, I started by uh, volunteering in the union um, very early. Um, I got in our charitable foundation, our charitable trust, and I got intricately involved into that, and we just expounded from there. Um, and then I was asked to kind of get on the executive board, uh, and I did that. And then I was asked to, to run for the state uh, board in 2009. I did that. And then I became the state president in 2000. 11. Then Scott Walker hit with Act 10 in February of 2011. And then I was thrust into the spotlight, in all honesty, when it came to politics. But I remember the first time I gave a speech, we actually, um, Phil Noonfeld, the president of the AFL, called me up and said, hey, you want to say a couple words since you got your bagpipes here and our flags and we have our, our men and women there marching. And uh, and I actually got the line from somebody else, and they just said, hey, you should go up there and say, you know, the House of Labor is on fire. And the firefighters are here to put it out. So I went up there and said that. The crowd enjoyed it. And they asked me to speak at a couple more rallies. And then we were there speaking and marching every step of the way. And we continue to fight back now. And then you ran for lieutenant governor. Yes. So there was a, there was a, um, a draft for me to run for governor by a young man in Sheboygan, I believe, a couple activists. And I knew I was not running for governor uh, back then. Um, but I was approached by some to possibly look at a lieutenant governor. So I did that seriously. Um, there were no other candidates, I don't think, that were uh, seriously in the running. So um, sitting down with some people and some party folks and uh, others, I decided to do it. And we ran, ran in the recall, which was unique because normally the governor and the lieutenant governor link up after the primary. But in this case, you have to recall the lieutenant governor and the governor separately. Uh, so I had to run my own campaign. Had, we had to raise our own money. We couldn't switch, flip-flop money. Uh, so we did well. I got, I think, 1,156,520 votes. And you remember that number because you know what it takes to win. It's about another 140,000 votes or so, maybe a little more than that. Well, besides uh, how many votes it takes to win, what did you take away from, from that campaign, and how are you bringing that to this race? You know, I, I, I really... I got to meet a lot of people around our state, and I learned that a struggle is a struggle, and that we, we have a lot more in common than we do divided. Um, there will be those who will tell you or talk about the urban and rural divide a lot. And, I mean, there's a difference between the two areas, obviously. That's why one's urban, one's rural. But a struggle is a struggle. If you're in Rice Lake or Merrill or La Crosse or Claire or whether you're in Kenosha, Racine or Milwaukee or Madison, you know, if you're struggling, you're struggling. It doesn't matter what color you are. Um, poverty sees no color. You grew up in Delavan. Yeah. Our, our governor did, too. Not a lot of people that look like me in Delavan. No? No. What was that like? It was like a lot of people look like you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> just a good thing, though. I had, uh, I had a, uh, an upbringing that actually, I think, shaped me to be who I am today. I, uh, obviously, that's... Via my parents, uh, my mother and father are still together. God bless them, Mary and Bill Mitchell. Um, they're originally from Cleveland, Ohio. And, the, and, and then I was actually born in Milwaukee at St. Joe's Hospital. Uh, and then we moved to Delavan once I was in the third grade. We went to University Park, Chicagoland area for a while. But third grade, Delavan, Wisconsin. 
Um, so it was a shock. My my older brother was uh, in sixth grade, I believe. So we, I remember I remember like it was yesterday taking him and my family walking him into his school, uh, middle school. And when we walked in, all the kids were congregated because it was the first day of school, and we had to walk through the crowd. I mean, it was like the seas parted because everyone was looking like, what in the heck happened? I mean, it, it was just, it was bizarre. And it was bizarre for us. I think it was bizarre for a lot of kids there. But, you know, what I learned is that that is a loving community that embraced us. We loved it. Uh, we were one of probably literally three uh, African-American families in the whole um, area. It's about 6,000 folks, uh, Delavan Darien High School. Governor, me and Governor Walker actually went to the same school. Uh, Delavan, we, we graduated, graduated from the same high school. Now, we obviously took some different classes and learned some different lessons. I have a bachelor's degree. But, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was interesting. But uh, Delavan was great. There are a lot of Democrats running for governor. Yeah. Uh, like, like, a, like a lot. But we lost two. Or two dropped out. Well, then, we then you two got more. two more. Yeah, yeah. So and, back and, to and even, maybe another like, one. It's, it's hard to say. Well, we'll see what happens. The more the better. It's democracy. Is it better? No. It's not. <laughs> it's not I'd be lying if I said it was. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's harder to get your message out. Um, I, I love democracy, obviously, and, I, and I'm a Democrat. And uh, all the people that are in the race are actually good people. And, you know, they all deserve and are able to run. So, yeah, that's good. But, I mean, it, I'd be lying if I didn't say that it's hard to get your message across and it's hard to keep your eyes on a prize, which is for my and for my eyes is is defeating Scott Walker. So I hope we stay cordial and that we don't get in a place where we're hammering each other and we're. I mean, that's what you know it would look like the 2016 Republican primary. I hope we don't get there. Um, but right now, it's been good. So how do you? I mean, if if you if you don't start going after each other hard. Um, how, how are voters supposed to tell you all apart? How are they supposed to figure out who they want to support? That's a good question. Uh, again, it's, it's getting your message out. We, we all generally agree on a lot of the same things um, when it comes to education, health care, um, the economy even for most, most of the issues. We say them a little differently, but a lot of times we agree on things. But I think going back to the experience, I always say that I'm the only candidate uh, on the stage when we have these forums that actually has calluses on its hands. And I, I'm a worker. And I'm a firefighter by trade, and as firefighters, we respond to our community and our people on the worst days of their lives. And when people are at their worst, we have to be at our best. And when I take off my turnout code and when I'm not uh, responding to medical emergencies or running with my team or my company uh, into danger, I take my turnout code and I go work for working people uh, for hours, wages, working conditions, and health and safety. So I've spent the majority of my life standing up for working people. And standing up for those that at times can't stand up or don't are scared to stand up for themselves. And that's what we need in, in, in government. I mean, that's what we need. The role of government is to do for those what they can't do for themselves. And I've spent the majority of my life actually helping to uh, give people a voice at the table so that every, things are equitable and things are fair. And that's what we need uh, state government. So I think that's what separates me apart um, from a lot of the candidates. We've tried the elder statesman and Tom Barrett. Um, and we didn't win. And four years later, we tried uh, with Mary Burke, who I supported, and Tom Barrett, obviously, I supported at the time. Um, we've tried some different things, but they don't have a plan for me. They don't. There's no playbook for uh, how they're going to come at me. They're, they're not ready for someone that actually can stand toe to toe with Scott Walker, because they're they're ready for some of the same lackluster talking points that they've seen over the last seven and a half, eight years. I care about this state deeply, and these issues are going to be with me for a long time. Us talking about a five-year plan is not helping me. It may be fine for you, but it's not helping me. Now, whether they're from the community, I don't care. Whether they're from space, I don't care. As long as they can provide the best visual experience for Madison. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. These are Cap Times Talks, smart conversations about big topics in Madison. Look for Cap Times Talks on iTunes or anywhere else you find podcasts. You are the only African-American candidate running for governor. For now. 
for now. <laughs> Everybody's getting yeah, in. Know. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I mean, 2016 was a rough year for for racial politics. Um, we saw tensions reignited or, or brought onto the forefront that you know were, were hidden, and and now it seems like it's sort of just okay to to talk about these things in a way that we haven't heard before. Are you are you worried about encountering any of that on the trail? Do you think Wisconsin is is different or or I guess shielded from from any of what we saw sort of nationally in 2016? Unfortunately, when it comes to race, uh, I, I think open and honest dialogue is what we need in order to combat racism uh, and prejudices. But unfortunately, when it comes to, to President Trump and at the national level, what we're seeing is if you're African-American, a lot of times the answer is to um, more police. And if you're Hispanic or Latino, Mexican, the answer is build a wall. And if you're Muslim, the answer is a travel ban. So everything we're seeing is seems to, again, to divide people. And we are a lot worse off when we are divided. When we're together, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish as, as a people in Wisconsin and across this country. Um, but when we're divided, all we're doing is arguing. I mean, in, in the, the dialogue or what we're, what we're hearing, if you watch MSNBC or CNN or Fox, it's always negative, negative, negative. It's this person versus that person. And what, uh, in my opinion, what Governor Walker does and what Donald Trump does is they create enemies. They create an enemy for another group of people and a classification of people. And as long as that enemy's having good benefits, as long as that union member has good benefits, as long as they have a pension, as long as they have good hours, as long as they have good working conditions, you will never get that. So instead of the answer being, let's build everybody up, the answer is, let's take that away from them, and then you'll be better off. And that goes against history, common sense, and, and logic. So we all rise together. So tell me, if, if you are elected governor, what, what would be your top five priorities of things Governor Walker has done that you would seek to undo? Hmm. Top five. Well, there's more than five. Well, that's why I said top five. <laughs> <laughs> well, top five and a half. No, I would, I would say. <laughs> well, we'll let you have a half. Um, so I would go to the labor, all the labor laws. Act 10, right to work, prevailing wage, are all things that um, are hurting middle class individuals. And that's why we're seeing people struggling in our state. So I think um, he shouldn't have done that. That was all about politics. It wasn't about policy. It wasn't about budget woes. It was essentially about um, him trying to weaken his political opponents. And it was all about politics. Um, prevailing wage, again, another law that unfortunately hurts uh, middle class individuals. So that's one. Number two would be. <laughs> <laughs> I see, see you I, snuck I, that I, I in, stuck there. That in yeah. la labor laws. Yeah. So number two would be education. The governor took $1.6 billion from K-12 K education, and now he's putting back $630 million, and he's calling that progress. Um, it's not progress. K-12 education, the $250, uh, million, $250 million he cut from UW, so that's number two. Number three, we'll be short, I promise, Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> I will make Wisconsin believe in science again. So we will bring back the DNR to where it should be and actually fully fund the DNR, take the politics out of it, depoliticize it, and bring scientists back, bring engineers back, and make sure that we have good and decent corporate partners. Uh, Planned Parenthood. Um, Governor Walker's first budget, which a lot of people forget about, um, was a huge cut to try to defund Planned Parenthood. So 12,000 women uh, that used to go to Planned Parenthood, not for a woman's right to choose, mind you, just, just to have basic, decent health care. Um, that that's been stripped away. So 12,000 women lost a lot of their health care, the ability to go to Planned Parenthood, just because of some of the closings of the, the, the clinics uh, that provided that service. Um, those are top things. I, I say number five would be... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're trying to be sneaky here. I'm not. I'm really not. Because that all goes together. Yeah, that's fine. It's but fine. number, number fine. five would be um, the African-American male incarceration rate in our state is ridiculous. We are the highest, as you know, um, that we are the highest state to put African-American American males behind bars. We, we can put about 16,000 people behind bars. And right now we have over 23,000 people behind bars. There's been a lot of talk about Lincoln Hills and repurposing that. But we need to get at the core and the root of why we are putting so many African-American males behind bars. And, you know, a lot of so, some people across the state will may say, oh, that's not my issue. But it is because 
when we spend over a billion dollars a year on the Department of Corrections, uh, that, that affects everybody. Um, so those are the top five-ish things that I would look at or undo that Walker did. So can you tell me something that Governor Walker has done well in office? Hmm. Something he's done well. You know what? I think he does a good job of balancing family and his, his uh, career. I think he's a good family man. I think he has a, a great wife and uh, two very, um, very good kids, two very good boys. I mean, he, he wins elections. He wins, but he's a good, he's a good skilled, crafty politician. I think that's the problem. We have enough skilled, crafty politicians. I mean, he says one thing and does another, and we've seen that over and over and over again. And I believe the people of Wisconsin have seen the light in that. And they, they, the, the Governor Walker candidate does not have a playbook for Malin Mitchell. So to, to did I just speak in third person? You did, I, yeah. I love doing that. <laughs> Let's do that the rest of the time, me and you. I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> okay. Jesse asked, wants to ask a question. Uh, Jesse's going to ask you a question. Okay, Mal- weird. Mal- Mal- <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Last minute. Okay, here we go. Tell me now, if you, you, you've told me five things you want to undo. Are there, are there five or, or, or five or fewer okay. <laughs> things you would, you would try to, to add or, or think new things you would like to, to do in office? Well, Malin Mitchell would like to <laughs> build economic opportunity. But what I would really like to do is raise the minimum wage. We have a plan um, that we would actually raise wages. And everyone's talking about $15 an hour, and $15 an hour is a floor. Uh, so it's a $15 hour floor, but it's also setting up a sectoral commission. So region, regional commissions that would look at uh, wages and, and, and look at it within that region where wages should be. Uh, another thing I would do is, is actually adequately fund schools, uh, make sure that we take care of our higher learning. Um, I would try, I'm, we're working on a plan to have two years of uh, free college tuition, um, but you would actually pay it forward. So from sixth grade onward, you actually work. Uh, get community service a certain amount of hours until 12th grade, and you would have two years paid for by the state because there are no free lunches. Everyone talks about free tuition, free tuition, but someone's paying for something somewhere. So let's make the kids a responsible one and also let them give back to their community so then they have a sense of community before they even get into school and they realize where that tuition came from and that it's not free, but they actually earned it and deserve it. Um, I would also look at health care, and uh, we would accept the Medicaid expansion. Um, I would look at bringing back that train money because we travel a lot from Milwaukee to Madison, and to have that high-speed rail would be clutch. And a couple other things, we would, we would um, look at transportation and infrastructure. Our roads suck. I mean, when you travel around the state, it's bad. And you go in rural areas, it's really bad. There's a lot we can do in our state, but those are some of the five. I think I kept it to five. I think you did. Are you ready for your lightning round? Yeah, I think so. Malin's ready. Malin's ready. That's just going to ask the question. Yes! <laughs> you got me. Woo! <laughs> Isn't it fun, though? Yeah, it's a little, it's I a little love fun. It. It's a little fun. <laughs> it's the most fun you can have without alcohol, talking in third person. The, wow. <laughs> That's high praise. Maybe that was an overstatement. I don't know. That's a lot. Well, speaking of alcohol, first question. You ready? I'm ready. Favorite Wisconsin beer? Spotted Cow. Easy. Best advice your parents or another person who is important to you gave you growing up? Uh, um, it's consequences for your actions. Okay. And my mom used to say, you don't believe that fat meat is greasy. <laughs> That's an old Southern term. What does that mean? I don't know, actually. <laughs> but she used to say before she would give us a whooping. Ooh. And I still don't know what that means. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. I mean, I didn't get a lot of whoopings. My brothers did. But they... uh, best concert you've attended? Best concert ever was Michael Jackson and the Jackson Five and the Victory Tour at Comiskey Park when I was probably eight or nine years old, ten years old. That's pretty good. Uh, you may not have time to be doing this right now, but are you? Do you do you stream anything like movies, TV, and are you currently binging on anything? I, I used to binge on um, House of Cards. Hmm. What do you think? Was it accurate? I'll tell you what, <laughs> a lot of it, unfortunately, is, yes. I mean, it goes a little, the first season, it goes a little over the top. It gets a little crazy, yeah, the, yeah. The second and third, but the first season was, oof. Oof, yeah. Uh, Politics is a contact sport. No, it's, it's true. It's not, uh, it's not for the lighthearted. Uh, favorite Wisconsin lake? 
My favorite Wisconsin lake is actually Silver Lake in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, believe it or not. Even though I dive in Lake Monona, Lake Mendota, yeah. my favorite lake is actually Silver Lake in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, because that's where me and my dad and my brothers would go fishing, like two or three times a month during the summer. And we were horrible fisher, fishermen, but we loved it. A uh, political role model. President Barack Obama. Um, I really like Governor Deval Patrick out of Massachusetts for the most part. And I, I obviously didn't know him, but I love reading and learning and appreciate Abraham Lincoln. Uh, do you have any pets? I, I used to have a dog. You have a dog, a little black dog. I do have a little black dog. I sound like a stalker kind of. How do I know? <laughs> you, you studied up. <laughs> I'm impressed. Stalker, stalker. It's Twitter. I mean, we're Twitter friends, right? We, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, everything on the internet is fair game. Right, okay. That's all I know about you, I promise. Nothing else. <laughs> uh, pet peeve. You know what? I have I have a couple of those, but one of them is I don't, I don't like – like when we're in the office – like my campaign office, I hate when people like eat in front of me. I hate when people chew. Like I hate, <laughs> and then they're talking and their food's falling out. Like I don't like that. I don't like when people drive in the left lane. Mm. Like, like if they're going too slow, or yeah. just like if they hang or out just there. drive at all. Like yeah. you're, you're supposed to drive in the right lane, right? Yeah. Yep. You, you pass on the left, you drive on the right. Um, I had a lot of them. <laughs> I don't. I don't like the people have. Long, I don't like when men have long fingernails. I don't know why that even matters to me. I don't know. <laughs> it's very specific. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wisconsin bucket list Hate is. Bad breath. Oh, wow. You're still going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just be a venting session now. Your Wisconsin bucket list. Is there a stereotypically Wisconsin thing that you've never done, but you would like to try? You know, I've never been to the Apostle Islands. Oh, have I, you? I have not. That is a good, good bucket list item. What's right. yours? I've never gotten snowmobiling. It oh, would it would have been hunting, um, but I did that now. So um, snowmobiling's better. I've never done that. Snowmobiling is uh, yeah, that is great time. That's what I hear. Is Malin ready for Malin's last question? <laughs> this doesn't work if I do it. Malin's ready <laughs> if Jesse's ready to ask it. Jesse's ready to ask it. Okay. Favorite Wisconsin cheese. Favorite Wisconsin cheese? Yeah. I mean, if I just say cheddar cheese is my favorite cheese, does that work or no? Can you be more specific? I mean, cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheeseburger is my favorite burger at the old fashioned. Just straight cheddar with nothing on it. I mean, so I'm. I would say I'm kind of boring in this way, and that my favorite food is actually a shrimp fried rice or just a cheddar, a double cheddar cheeseburger. What's called a juicy Lucy, where you take the the meat and you open it up and then you put like the cheese right in the middle then you close back the patty then you sear it it forms forms this perfect edge and you put nothing else on it Mm -hmm. so that's what i would eat every day if i had to be like governor walker and eat a ham sandwich every day you would have a juicy lucy every day which is boring yes so i would i would have a juicy lucy every day and that would be wisconsin cheddar cheese would be in the middle of course okay any parting words if you want to hear more or Volunteer, you can go to mailandmitchell.com as our website. We're on Twitter, as you know. I do know that. Um, our Twitter handle is Mail and Mitchell. And our Facebook is Mail and Mitchell. So <laughs> Mail and Mitchell, Mail and Mitchell, Mail and Mitchell. My book actually comes from the Bible, the Book of Ruth. That's where my name comes from. Oh, yeah? What does yeah. it mean? But the actual name means one who is sickly. Oh. And that, my parents gave me this. <laughs> so <sad>. I know. <laughs> I, I was hoping it'd be a better story, but that's just the truth. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in. <laughs> I've loved it. This was fun. Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Thanks for listening to this very first episode of Wedge Issues. Our theme music is Oh, Wisconsin by Loxley. 
please rate, review us, and subscribe on iTunes or anywhere else you find your podcasts. And please reach out if you have any thoughts or ideas for the show. I'm on Twitter at Jesse O P J E S S I E O P I E, or you can email me at J O P O I E N at Madison.com. We'll be coming out with new episodes of the show every Friday, and next week we'll be talking with another candidate for governor, Calder Royce. I'm having a lot of fun talking to these candidates and putting this together for you folks, and I really hope you're enjoying it too. Uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>